Hello friends, welcome to another intriguing edition of Rahul's Advanced Biology. Today I'll be bringing you a very ecstatic topic known as Fast COV2, Induced COV19 and Interleukin 6 and the effects perpetrated by the Interleukin 6 receptor antagonists. For the starters, I would like to inform you that the SARS-CoV-2 induced COVID-19 has been termed as a global pandemic by the World Health Organization. More than 5 million people have already been affected by it and more than 3 lakh people have already lost their lives. Scientists throughout the globe have been trying really meticulously in order to come up with various vaccine regimens and various drug types in order to curb and control this specific pandemic. In my previous videos, I have already talked about the virology, the pathophysiology, the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase and various drug regimens like remdesivir, it has already got the emergency authorization from the FDA USA, the hydroxychloroquine, the chloroquine plus azithromycin treatment and I have also talked in my previous video about the CD147 which is the alternative receptor accompanying the H2 which is the primary receptor for the SARS-CoV-2 binding. In this very video, we will be talking about specifically a factor known as CRS, cytokine release syndrome, simply known as cytokine storm. So cytokine storm is at the epicenter behind converting a normally affected COVID-19 patient into a critically ill, severely ill COVID-19 patient. So the multiple organ damage which is followed by the viral sepsis all is perpetuated, all is perpetrated by the cytokine, the cytokine storm syndrome or simply the cytokine release syndrome. Now specific chemokines and interleukins IL-6, they are mainly the pro-inflammatory ones. IL-1, IL-6, TNF-alpha, MCP, MIP, like cardiotropin-1. So these are the specific leukotrienes, specific immunomodulators which pave the pathway, which pave the commencement of the multiple organ failure along with NF-kappa-B and so on. So how does it all begin? So interleukin-6 is at the epicenter of the cytokine release syndrome or cytokine storm. What is interleukin-6? In 1960s, scientists were baffled to find out about interleukin-6 and they also termed it the B-cell stimulatory factor 2 and some of the scientific groups also termed it as interferon beta 2 which was a novel interferon at that point of time. But later on, the scientists disagreed and they vehemently proved that the IL-6 doesn't possess any kind of interferon activity via the experiments perpetrated with the IL-6 receptor antagonists. It is also known to be a pleiotropic cytokine, meaning that it can have diverse effects. Like it could be a precursor for myeloid cells. It could enhance the expression of C-reactive protein, which is the biomarker of inflammation and other biomarker inflammation like serum amyloid proteins the fibrinogen, right? It can also upregulate osteoclastogenesis. It can also upregulate the rank L pathway, receptor activator for nuclear, nuclear factor, kappa B. It can also lead to pro-inflammatory or inflammatory diseases like Crohn's disease, systemic lupus erythematosus, and it can also lead to rheumatoid arthritis and so on. Now this interleukin-6, can induce IL-2, IL-3 and certain other cytokine induced pathways also via the IL-6 receptor. Now it has been found that interleukin-6 doesn't work alone. It works with GP-130 which is a signal transducer. Both are transmembrane proteins and IL-6 receptor family is made up of IL-6 receptor and GP-130. Now, IL-6 receptor is a transmembrane protein, GP-130 is also a transmembrane protein. But IL-6 receptor is found to be of two types, soluble IL-6 receptor and membrane-bound IL-6 receptor. Now, this specific soluble IL-6 receptor can wreak havoc. How I'll tell you in just a, in, in a few moments. Now, let's come down to the specific cis signaling. There are two types of signaling. The signaling that involves the IL-6 receptor membrane bound or transmembrane IL-6 IL receptor is known as the cis signaling and the signaling which involves the soluble IL-6 receptor is known as the trans signaling. Now IL-6 is expressed on mainly T cells, P cells, dendritic cells, macrophages and so on. So why are the cis signaling? What happens is IL-6 molecule 
can come and bind to the IL-6 receptor which is expressed on these immune cells and upon binding the intracytoplasmic domain of the IL-6 receptor which is of eticlodalton can bind to the GP-130 or glycoprotein-130 which is of 130 kilodalton. Now what happens is after the binding of GP-130 the dimerization of GP-130 takes place. So all in all the complex becomes as 2 times or 2 IL-6 molecules, 2 IL-6 main receptor and 2 GP-130. After GP-130 becomes a dimer, since it is a signal transducing molecule, it has a specific domain which is the intracytoplasmic or which is the cytoplasmic domain you can say, intracellular domain. So it causes the commencement of various signaling cascades like JAK pathway, Janus tyrosine kinases and also the recruitment of STAT3, specifically the STAT3 from the STAT family of proteins, that is the signal transducer and activator of transcription. 3. It can also cause the activation of various proapoptotic proteins and so on. But this doesn't end here. The pro-inflammatory role of IL-6 becomes quite large, becomes quite heavily exaggerated when you take into consideration the soluble IL-6 receptor. Because what happens is GP133, GP130 is ubiquitously expressed on various cell types almost all the cell types. So what happens is when we take into consideration the trans signaling which involves the soluble IL-6 receptor. So what happens is the soluble IL-6 receptor binds with the IL-6 outside the cell in the extracellular portion. Then that specific complex can bind to GP-130, glycoprotein-130, 130, 130 glodalton, glycoprotein-130. And since glycoprotein Glycoprotein 130 is expressed on all types of cells. So, for example, if we take the example of you can say vascular endothelium or endothelial cells present in the tunica intima of the arteries, what happens there is it could wreak havoc. How? Same way the GP130 would get dimerized, and then what would happen here is the IL6, the soluble IL6, IL6R combination, soluble IL6 and soluble IL6R combination with GP130 would then cause the VEGF, vascular endothelial growth factor to be upregulated, IL-6 to be upregulated, right? Macrophage chemotactic protein, MCP to be upregulated, MIP1 alpha to be upregulated and also it would up, it would downregulate endothelial cadherin, E-cadherin. All this would lead to the increase in vascular permeability which is one of the hallmarks of acute respiratory distress syndrome which is perpetuated by the SARS-CoV-2 virus which then leads to lung failure. I have talked about ARDS also in my previous video where I have talked about ARDS and vascular complications in COVID-19, diffuse alveolar damage and so on. So those types of things happen here due to ARDS and which is commenced, which is initiated by the vascular permeability enhancement by the trans signaling of IL-6. Then again, there are various types of IL-6 receptor antagonists which have been in the market. In my previous video, I have talked about tocilizumab. Here, I would like to talk about sarilumab, which is also present, which is also currently under the phase 3 clinical trial, which was approved by the Food and Drug Administration USA in May 2017 for rheumatic diseases. Now, sarilumab is a completely humanized recombinant monoclonal antibody. So, it was generated in a way that mouse model was taken and a humanized antibody was generated. So, as to reduce the utilizing antibody response and nullify the complement response when this specific antibody is put in our system. Since it, is, it, ha it has got a potent IL-6 receptor antagonist activity. It can be given to us, it can be administered via, sub, via the subcutaneous route. And what happens is in the mouse model, what they did was, they specifically took the humanized antibody IL-6R from the mouse. How? The mouse was 
immunized with the human IL-6 receptor. IL-6 are to generate the monoclonal antibody like serilumab in the mouse which would be humanized in nature. So this was how it was generated and thus it doesn't really induce the complement pathway or the neutralizing antibody when it is administered in the human body. So serilumab has been under the phase 3 clinical trial and it has already surpassed the phase 1 and phase 2 clinical trial when it was carried on in the critically ill COVID-19 patients. So these kinds of IL-6 receptor antagonists can have profound or paramount importance, can have profound implications, applications when you take into consideration the severely ill COVID-19 patients, when you take into con consideration the fact about saving lives. Because what happens is it's not the SARS-CoV-2 virus really, it's your immune response that kills you. It's the immune response that triggers a really exaggerated immunomodulatory or you can say immune cytokine release cascade and which leads to multiple organ failure, immune complex formation and then viral sepsis and eventually death. And one of those prime, one of the prime reasons why a person dies due to COVID-19 is ARDS, Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. So it is perpetrated exclusively by higher vascular permeability which is one of the results of the IL-6, soluble IL-6 receptor signaling, YGP-130, which I just explained to you. So if the IL-6 receptor antagonists are used properly, then they can really show, they can really portray a specific mechanism by which one can save critically ill COVID-19 patients' lives. So it needs to, the drugs like serulimab, it needs to surpass the phase 3 clinical trial. We need to wait and watch. And then hopefully it gets the nod from the FDA for being used for the general masses who are critically ill and suffering from COVID-19. So that's all the conceptual progress you need to attain in order to comprehend this lecture. If you like the video, kindly hit the like button. And in the description section of the video, I've already put the links of the research papers that I had referred in order to make this lecture and I've also put the link of my Facebook page. You can like my Facebook page and you can directly contact me via messenger to get my prompt reply. If you have any kinds of queries or questions, doubt clarifications that you require, kindly do not hesitate to post your comments in the comment section below. You will be getting reply from me as soon as possible. And again, if you have liked the video, kindly hit the Subscribe button and do not forget to ring the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever my next video comes online. Thanks a lot. See you soon.